people have a way of hooking their wagon onto somebody else. If, if they meet a person who they think is a righteous person, and the person seems to be, you know, have confidence, or whether it's a male or a female, they seem to have confidence. The, uh, the people who lack faith, they'll hook their wagon onto that person to get a sense of identity. And they don't ever really examine to see, well, what is it that this man or woman have that I don't have, right? But they get a false sense of self from that person. I had the, uh, and so now I, and now I realize that it's because the children of God are the ones who have faith in him. Because a lot of people don't have faith. They just don't have that faith. And, you, and they don't see it in their own action that they don't have the faith. And it is mind-blowing. It's just absolutely mind-blowing to me. I, had, I was in New York this week, and uh, that sounds so important, huh? I was in New York, um, and I had the chance to meet Dr. Carson. You know who he is? Yeah. Dr. Ben Carson. Yes. He is a, uh, a man who happened to be black, but he's a surgeon, and apparently he's a, one of the top notch surgeons in the country. And he's also known for... Uh, uh, dividing Siamese twins. They were like hooked together in Africa and he did a, a major thing on with that as well. And so we were there to do a, a show of black Republicans who were being attacked by you know, others. And so it's going to air Monday night, by the way. Um, it was very, 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 very interesting. There's about 20 people there and we had like a town hall setting. And uh, so it was very, very interesting. But I got a chance to sit with, in the green room, to sit with Dr. Carson, because I've seen him in different interviews, how he handled himself. You know, he seemed to always be calm and so forth. You can't get him to change his mind about what he knows is right in his heart. He has a, 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 a good personality, you know what I'm saying? So, and he's been called a man of God. And so... You know, I, I, I wanted to meet him. I interview, I'm interviewing him on my radio show, but I wanted to meet him in person so I could kind of ask him some things about his life and to understand his relationship with God. How did he get to this point? You know, when I read about Gandhi, when I read about Martin Luther King or Booker T. Washington or men and women who uh, seem to be different from the world, I want to know more about that rather than just hooking myself to the wagon to be pulled by their, who, who they are, what they believe. I want my own faith in God, you know what I'm saying? Because somebody else's faith in God is not going to do you any good. Except, it'll do you good in that it's a good example for you. But you can't hook up. You can't hook your wagon to them and think that somehow or another, that going to give you faith. Because when you're alone at night and emptiness you know, you know how that boredom thing comes and it makes you feel like you're nothing? Hooking your wagon to somebody else doesn't solve that problem. When you uh, are attempting to gossip and lie and steal and, and smother people, hooking your wagon won't solve that either. I asked, um, I had an opportunity to talk to his wife first. We just happened to be sitting together in the green room. And so we were talking about, she asked me about what, what do I do? And I told her we help people overcome anger you know, we have a nonprofit and stuff like that. We work with men, helping them to overcome anger. And she said, oh, uh, Ben had a lot of anger. You know, he had a lot of rage before. And I said, really? I didn't know that about him. Apparently he wrote about it in his book, but I hadn't read the book yet. Uh, and so, lo and behold, I had a chance to talk to him. And so I asked him, I said, uh, um, I hear that you had a lot. Well, first he was just kind of telling me about some of the stuff he had gone through. Uh, an example of that, he told me that he was on an airplane twice that almost crashed. You know, he was flying and he said that something happened and the plane literally flipped over and was going into a, a, you know, a nosedive. And the people yelling and screaming and and... He just figured, you know what? If God is ready to take me, now's the time. You know, he, I, I didn't ask. He would just tell me about it. I don't know if it was recently or in the past. 
And he said that all of a sudden a calmness came and the plane turned back on his proper state and, you know, went on and kept going. And he had no fear about that. He, he wasn't freaking out and worried about that. Then he told me another time, I think he said he was in Jamaica or somewhere, and he was on a plane, and the plane was going down. One of the engines or something stopped on the plane, and when it stopped, they had to cut off the other engine in order to restart it. So in the meantime, the plane had going in for a nose dive. Isn't that amazing? And, and yet again, he believed in God. He didn't freak out. Um, he, he didn't worry about the situation. And uh, the plane, they were able to get it started again. And so the plane made it all right. Then he, he told me about a car crash. And somebody ran into his car. He showed me a picture of somebody head on with him. And, uh, and, and it just really demolished the car in the front there at least. And yet he came out fine because he didn't have fear. He had faith in God. And then I asked, I said, um, so how were you able to overcome your anger? How, how did that happen that you were able to overcome that? And he said that um, he was in a fight once with a guy and he stabbed the guy in the belly with a knife. But the, the butt buckle, butt, belt buckle, right? Stopped the knife from penetrating. It didn't go into the guy, right? And so he said that in that very moment, he said to God, well, you know, I have this rage that I cannot get rid of. And if you don't get rid of it for me, I'm going to end up destroying myself. I can't get rid of this anger. I just, it just won't leave on my part. And he went into his room and he prayed to God to remove that anger. And God removed it from him. And he doesn't have it now. And I'm like, wow, that is so, isn't that like interesting? And I realized that if you have faith in God and never, ever, ever doubt, no matter what you ask of him, it shall be done. And it's just that simple. If you have faith and never doubt, no matter what you ask of him, he shall do it. But the problem is most people don't have that faith. They just don't have it. And they don't even have sense enough to see in their actions that they don't have faith in the way they treat others, in the way they treat themselves, their overreaction and, and gossiping and being angry and going, you know, all this. We cause more harm to one another than anybody, any, anybody or anything else can do. If mankind were to wake up and have faith in God, then all suffering would be over with. Peace would be on earth. Because it's us who bring the trouble to one another, to ourselves and to others, to our children. It's amazing, due to the lack of faith, the suffering that parents put upon their own children. And then they'll pretend that they're not doing it. They're in denial about themselves. We got to have faith. It's faith that will get you over anywhere, anytime, no matter what. Even if you should offend someone and you apologize, it is as though it never happened when you can admit that you were wrong. God doesn't remember your sin anymore. It's as though, it, now the people that are mad at you will remember forever. But it's not up to them. It's not up to someone else uh, how they feel about you or think about you that takes your life. We are really, by the grace of God, we are really in control of our own lives. No one is to blame for anything that we do. We are at fault. And if you examine yourself, you would see that it's you that brings this up on yourself because you don't have faith in God. And I know why we don't have faith. Well, I have faith. But I know why people don't have faith. It's so apparent why they don't have faith. And I want to kind of talk to you about that because I see a lot of people when I travel, I see a lot of people grasping for other people, you know. And they want to be associated with other people. They want this, but not for the right reasons, but just to get a sense of identity from that person. I don't even think people love one another. If you have a, a lightweight name going on for yourself or you have a little money and someone knows about it, let's say you win the lottery, right? Everybody love you. 
Everybody love you. And as soon as you lose all that money, they're all gone. If you're kind of popular or well-known, everybody love you. Either love you or hate you. If they uh, disagree with your politics, they hate you. But that, that's not like love. You know, they don't see the human being and love the human being. They see the status or the money or whatever come with the hum, human being. All in the name of Jesus. And so we're losing our families. We're losing our country because of this kind of stuff. And I want to talk to you about that. You know, do you really, really, really have that faith? And do you recognize that you don't have it when you're out in the world on your own doing your thing? Do you know it's due to the lack of faith? When you judge your fellow man, when you have fear, if you have faith, you would never have fear. Isn't that amazing? And isn't it nice to be able to live that way, to just live a life of no fear at all? And then you don't have a feeling of being brave either. You just live your life, you know, living your life. You don't feel brave, but you definitely don't have fear at all. You don't have worry at all about anything. It's just not a part of your psyche. And then when you're going through things, when challenges come and they cause you to have to go through things, you have the unspoken faith that you're going to, it's going to be fine. That it's just going to be just fine. But what happens is when people do have troubles, you know what they do? They get into the troubles. They get into what is happening to them rather than not getting into it. And then they feel sad for themselves. They feel badly. They become alcoholics or drug addicts. and They worry. They lie. They do this. And they trip out. They get into the problem. It's the darnest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Why would you get into your, what's happening, into a situation, and then walk around worried about it? I worry about what people are going to think. I worry about what they're going to say or do next. I worry. Anybody here do this kind of stuff? You do do it. Isn't that like dumb? That's what they mean by you stupid people. <laughs> really, and when you wake up, you're going to see how stupid it was to be that way. When I examine my life and I think about uh, how I was, I was a stupid person. Worried about things, just got into all kind of stuff. But I didn't know at the time I was stupid. It seemed like it was the right thing. Even though it didn't work, it still seemed right. And, and my life was on the way to hell in a handbag. You know another stupid thing that people can do? Well, I already said this, is attach yourself to another person. It is the dumbest thing. And when you come out of this, you're going to see what I mean. It's the dumbest thing that you can ever do. One thing about me, I have never done that. Even in my craziness, I have never attached myself to another person. And I don't, I can't, I think, I was thinking about this over the week, uh, during the week, and I think that when I was growing up, I don't remember people attaching themselves to others. Even with the preacher, we liked the preacher, but that's about it. You know what I'm saying? And then when they would have the preacher over, sometimes they would bring the preacher over after the service, over to my grandmother's house, or he would go to other houses, right? And my grandmother would give him the best chicken, part of the chicken, because we always had chicken on Sundays. And I would be like, Mama, why are you giving him the leg and the thigh? That's my piece of chicken, right? I would, and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, baby. And then she would give me the best part of the chicken. I mean, my part, you know, because she wasn't attached to the preacher. But people attach themselves now. And it's the dumbest thing you can ever do. And then when you find flaw in the person that you have attached yourself to, it, your life is over. Have you noticed that? Oh, this person is a human being. I thought they were perfect. They, they had a Christmas tree in their house. <laughs> or they cursed, or they did this. Your life is over. Because human beings are going to do some stuff you don't agree with. It's just the way it is. But when you have faith in God, you're never, life is never over. Because things are always well. He does it right every time. You got to detach yourself from people, places, and things. 
You really do. You have to be in the world, but not of the world. You have to not worry. You have to stop worrying. You don't have to. But it's time out for the craziness. All in the name of Jesus. I would talk to a guy in New York, believe in God, and his life is on the verge of total destruction. All because he doesn't have faith. I said to him, you don't believe in God. Why are you saying that you do? If you believed in God, would you be thinking this way and feeling this way and worried this way and acting this way? I do believe in God. Where's the proof that you have faith in God? Uh-huh. Isn't it like food for thought? Yes. It's like it's time out for the okie doke. We're losing our country. We're losing the family. We're losing everything because Christians don't have faith in God. We're letting the world dictate how we function, what we say and don't say, and what to do and not do. The world is dictating that. And then if one should come along and disagree with you, you want to crucify him, him or her. It's dumb to let stress bring you to a point that you can't even function in life. I literally know people, all in the name of Jesus, who are so stressed that they can't function. Isn't that amazing? But they won't say, well, you know what? If I believe in God and he freed me up, why am I like this? Is there something wrong with this, you know? Self-examination is the most important thing that you can do. It really is. 